since I'm doing dry January or what people often refer to as a no buy January, I've had some time to reflect on some of my more recent luxury purchases instead of thinking about what 10 things I'm going to be buying next. And I figured it might be fun for me to share with you a little update on some of the standard luxury purchases I made in 2023 and what better way to do it than to actually rank them. So if you'd like to get a little update on some of the pieces that I picked up in the past year and find out which ones turned out to be a winner and which ones I should have put right back on the shelf, then make sure to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe down below if you haven't done so yet, and keep on watching. If you've been with me for a while, you know the drill by now, I have done plenty of these ranking videos. I have ranked some of my most and least favorite luxury brands. We have ranked, I think, Every single iteration of the Kelly bag, I have ranked some of the best and worst Hermes mini bags and the list goes on. So if you're interested in seeing more of these ranking videos, I can make sure to have some linked in the info box and I always use the same tier maker app. So without further ado, let's dive straight in and let me walk you through some of the tiers pretty quick. So on top we have Holy Grail. These are the pieces that I truly feel like I've been able to get my money's worth out of. And of course, I'm grateful to have all of these pieces in my collection, but these are the ones that I would repurchase without a doubt. Underneath that, we have Happy to Have. These are things that are a great foundation piece in my collection, but not really things that I would necessarily run out to repurchase. Then we have Could Live Without. These are just kind of matte pieces, things that didn't work out quite as I had hoped. And then the bottom of the tier is return. These are the things that I want to, or if I could, I would return, not for store credit, but for an actual refund, because these are the kind of things that I should have never even considered buying. So let's start. The first piece that we have here is the polyback from the row. And this, by the way, is in no particular order. I think it was just uploaded based on the name of the picture. So it's not in chronological order. But the first thing that we have here is the polyback from the row, which I picked up in London at the beginning of last year. And it really quickly became one of my most used and most loved bags. Now, if you've been with me for a while, you'll remember that I wasn't really the most impressed with the quality of the rose bags. But I have to give credit where credit is due. I do think that their bags are getting better and better each and every single season. In fact, I think a new obsession with their bags was unlocked last year because I do have a couple of roll bags on my 2024 wish list, even though I'm not buying anything in January. So I'm not really thinking about what I'm going to be buying next. There are a few bags, well, a couple of bags that I'm eyeing and I really don't see myself buying a bag from any other brand other than the roll. So this was the beginning of a beautiful love affair with their bags. And I do have to say that the quality of this bag is just outstanding. I mean, to say that I abused this bag throughout the last year is an understatement. I have been carrying this to the gym. I used this for traveling last year. I use this in every single setting that you can possibly think of. I use this as a grocery bag when I just ran through a grocery store after the gym and I didn't have a paper bag with me or sorry, not a paper bag, a canvas bag with me. And I actually use this as a grocery bag and it's still in perfect shape. I love the design. I love the fact that it is insanely lightweight. I mean, it weighs nothing. You can fold it, twist it and turn it. The leather is so soft and so lightweight that it will not crack. It will not show any signs of tear and wear. It has aged beautifully, which is really impressive considering how often and how I have been using it because I really did not baby this bag, but it has worn beautifully. The quality is outstanding. It looks and feels unbelievably expensive. Anytime I go luxury shopping with this bag, I cannot tell you how many compliments I get on this particular bag without anyone pointing out the branding or pointing out, you know, some really obvious emblem. It really speaks for itself and it is quintessentially the raw understated elegance and luxury. It's all about the details, the finishing and the materials themselves. So if you are looking for a large and in charge oversized tote, something that will fit everything, 
even the kitchen sink this is an incredible bag to add to your collection especially if you don't like a heavy bag but you need a large bag this would be an incredible piece to add to your collection because it is featherweight i mean when i tell you that it weighs nothing i actually mean it it is by far one of the best purchases that I made not only last year but in the past few years so if you are looking for a tote bag this is something that I can really highly recommend. Moving on to the next piece which similar to the poly bag their unique selling point is also the fact that, that they are insanely lightweight especially considering how chunky and rigid they look which are the fresh ankle boots from Hermes. This is a pair of boots that is crafted from an insanely lightweight parachute nylon. The only downside is that the sizing is kind of all over the place because they're made of nylon. They really have no lining to them and there isn't an insole either. So I would suggest going down half a size if not an entire size in these. So definitely try to Try these on in store or maybe order a couple of sizes if you're going to get them online just so you can return the one that doesn't fit. But I think most people will have to go down half a size just because of the sizing and the fact that compared to other boots, they are kind of hollow on the inside. But other than that, if you are looking for a really cool utilitarian pair of boots, something that are meant to be worn and not babied, I mean, these look great, but you can genuinely put these to the test. They are water repellent they really don't feature any leather details so you don't have to worry about walking in the snow or in the rain i bought these specifically for dog walking this would be something nice to look into they're really chic they are pretty comfortable i mean i would suggest getting a pair of insoles in them just because they are pretty bare on the inside but other than that if you are looking for a pair of boots from hermes that are meant to be abused and worn, then this would be a good one to put on your radar. They're offered in a few different colors, both for men and women, and they really won't break the bank. I think these are just under a thousand dollars, which for a pair of Hermes boots is quite reasonable. So I would say that this is a design that I was happy to have last year, but they're really nothing life-changing. This piece on the other hand has changed my style forever because I was never really a big vest person before trying this piece from the row which is the Balham cashmere vest and since trying this particular piece which the row offers every single season they offer this in black and navy as part of their classic iconic range there I think they're called this one of their staples and then they also do them in seasonal colors but since trying this I have become a true convert and I have been living in just different cashmere vests and different knitted vests as you can probably tell I bought vests from high-end luxury brands and also from high street brands and while I love this particular design I don't really think I don't really know if it's worth the money because there are so many dupes out there at this point so I can make sure to have some link down below for you but if you are looking for a really beautiful staple vest something that you can wear on its own something that you can throw over a t-shirt or even a shirt something that can truly transform a really simple basic outfit into something a lot more refined and elevated this is an incredible piece to look into it is made of a really soft plush but quite thin cashmere so if you're a fan of the row and you don't have this piece in your collection I would highly suggest checking it out but if you're looking for something that will give you a similar look for a fraction of the price definitely check out my info box because I will have some link down below for you so I would say that the style itself is a holy grail but if you're not you know a committed row fan it might not be something that you want to spend the money on. By far the most extravagant purchase that I made last year was the Rock Birkin from Hermes, obviously, which was the first exceptional bag that I ever bought. It wasn't the first exceptional bag that I was ever offered, but it was the first one that I actually brought home with me because when it comes to these exceptional bags, obviously they tend to be reserved for the true Hermes connoisseur, for the Hermes collector, because they are kind of a chance for Hermes craftsmen to run wild with their imagination. So they will usually feature really unique colors, patterns, interesting finishes and craftsmanship that you will 
really not see too often. So they tend to be quite over the top, which just simply isn't my aesthetic. And they will very rarely, if ever, offer exceptional bags in all black. So when this bag was offered to me, I just simply could not pass up on it because of the color and the craftsmanship, but it's not a bag that I ever used. I did an updated video on this on TikTok recently because it's just not a bag that I would personally reach for, which I'm not really sure if it's because of the size. I'm just not a 25 kind of guy. I bought the Birkin 25 last year and then the year before I bought a Kelly 25 and I realized that I am really just not a 25 kind of guy. So I don't know if it's the size or if it's the fact that it's just so over the top, which doesn't really fit into my personal style and also my lifestyle. I just really don't go to places where I would want to carry an exceptional bag to. And also the fact that it is made of a really soft, really delicate leather gives me quite a bit of anxiety. So while it is a beautiful bag that I am so grateful that I was offered, it really is a piece that I have to be honest, I could live without as beautiful as it is. It personally just doesn't fit into my lifestyle. But if you'd like to see more close-ups and more details, definitely check out my TikTok that I filmed, I think a month or two ago. Even though I've only had this piece for, I wanna say just about a month, I can tell you that this is a bag that very much fits into my lifestyle. This is the kind of bag that I can really easily and really often take advantage of, which is the raw banana bag, which I did, I think I shared this bag in my last unboxing. So if you have not seen that, that including all the corresponding videos will be listed and linked in the info box for you. So if you want to see more mod shots and if you'd like to hear more details about this bag, definitely check that video out because if you're looking for a really easy grab and go understated bag, something that you can carry with the most casual of outfits, but you can definitely dress up to. I mean, I wouldn't carry this to a really formal occasion, but it is a beautifully streamlined, really elegant, really expensive looking bag without, of course, any obvious branding or any obvious emblems. This is an amazing bag to add to your collection, which I did buy the Uniqlo dupe of this bag a couple of years ago, and I used it so much that I felt it was time for me to actually upgrade and get the real thing. Even though there are definitely a few different dupes out there, you can get some from Uniqlo, which are made of nylon, which I mean, yes, it has the same inspiration, but it really will not do the same thing for your collection because this is made of leather. It looks and feels a lot more refined, whereas the Uniqlo one makes a great bag for running errands or for traveling. And if you just want to be a tourist, it will do the trick but it, they are really not the same thing. They cannot really be mentioned on the same page, but there are definitely some bags out there that are inspired by the shape that are also made of leather, which um, I think I talked about those before too. So again, everything will be listed and linked, but if you are looking for a great, simple, easy grab and go bag, this is something that I have been really enjoying and I do think it is the kind of thing that I will get my money's worth out of. So for me, I would say that it is a holy grail whether you decide to go for the original banana bag or one of the dupes. I think it is just the kind of style that anyone would be able to take advantage of. It wasn't intentional, but here we have another piece from the row, a piece that I have literally been living in. I mean, I was desperate. I think I bought this last spring. I was going to wear it in September and I remember posting about it on my Instagram that it was too hot in September to start wearing it. And I was so upset. I mean, I was counting down the days until the temperature dropped enough for me to actually start wearing this. And I've only been wearing it for a few months, but I have already got my money's worth out of it. I love this piece so much, which is one of the exaggerated sleeve pieces from the row, which was on the runway, I think for 2022. I'm pretty sure it was for 2022. And they did a ton of different iterations of the same design. There were dresses with these exaggerated sleeves. They did shirts. They even had a ton of different knits. So I bought the turtleneck version, but they had one that was a crew neck. They had a v-neck version of this, but I don't think that these are offered at this point, even though I think this should really become a classic because I love 
the rose knits, but I especially love the pieces that have a little bit of a twist to them. And this is the perfect example of that. They are really simple. And the reason I'm saying that they are, even though I bought the turtleneck, as I mentioned, they also had crew necks and v-necks, dresses and shirts, even though all of them were really simple design. I love the fact that they spiced it up just by simply exaggerating and lengthening the sleeve detail, which meant that there were so many different ways of styling such a simple wardrobe staple. I think it is just an incredible design that I definitely would not want to live without. So for me, it is again, one of the best purchases that I made in the last year. If you know me, you know that I pretty much live in white sneakers, so this is not going to be surprising. I have my favorite CT04 sneakers from Celine here, which I think I've gone through two or three of these sneakers, but I bought a fresh pair recently because they really don't last that long for me just because I wear them so much and they are paper white and they are really difficult to look after. Even though I do try, I spray them down and I try to clean them with a magic eraser every now and again. They just they just don't last that long because I wear them so much, but they are by far the most comfortable and most flattering sneakers that I currently own and that's currently out there. So if anything, these are definitely a holy grail for me. And I know that as soon as I am done with my current pair, I am going to be repurchasing these unless they come out with an even better design. These are going to be staying in my rotation for a really long time. Next up, we have another piece of knit here, but this time it's from Hermes. And it is a design that they have been offering consistently for the past year, year and a half. And even though the design has remained unchanged, they did play around with the fiber content. So the first year they brought this design out, I think it was only available in a few different colors, which is the reason I didn't buy it back then, because I couldn't find a color that I liked, which would have been black, but they didn't have it in black the first time they brought this design out. And I think it was a pretty even split between cashmere and wool. Then they brought it out for last fall winter, including a black colorway, which is of course the one that I went for. And it was a higher wool content and it was also slightly more expensive. Well, for this current spring summer season, they have brought this sweater back, but I think they increased the cashmere content as well as the price. So of course the price has been increasing each and every single season, but it is a design that I have really been enjoying because it is a really unique fit. It is definitely on the more oversized side, but it also is cropped, which means that I think it, the balance and the proportion works quite nicely. The fact that it has some more oversized sleeves, the body is definitely a little bit more baggy. It almost has a balloon shape to it, but because it is slightly cropped means that it looks incredibly flattering and there is a lot you can do with it. It makes an amazing layering piece and the selling point is that it's reversible. So on one side, it is a solid color and then on the other, it features the Osh on bias print, which is a really subtle age print. Personally, I have mainly been wearing it on the solid side and I love the fact that it features a really simple straight line, not only on the back, but also on the front and also on the sleeves, which is what sold this piece to me. I love these really subtle but interesting details when it comes to knits, just because I have so many black knits. I like buying ones that have some really interesting little twists to them. And this is definitely one that I have been loving. I love the fact that it is incredibly heavy. It is chunky, it's weighty, and it is also unbelievably warm. So if you're looking for a knit that you can play around with, something that you can dress up or dress down, and it's, it is the kind of piece that will dress anything up, no matter what you style it with, this would be an incredible design to go for. Now, this is not for the faint of heart because even when I bought it, I don't want to exaggerate. I can't remember the exact price, but I think it was close to $3,000, something along those lines. It was really quite expensive and it has only gotten more expensive since then. But if you don't mind investing in your knits, if you love Hermes and if you're looking for a piece that you can wear season after season, this would be an incredible piece to look into, especially now that it has a more, a little bit of a higher cashmere content if they still do this in black or navy. I actually would consider picking this up in navy too just because I have been wearing the black one so much but 
if you're looking for a great chunky knit, this would be an amazing piece to have in your collection. So I'm going back and forth between Holy Grail and Happy to Have. Honestly, I have to say that it is definitely something that I would repurchase. So because of that, I would say that for me in my collection, just because I love my knit so much, it is a holy grail piece. Okay. This next piece isn't a piece of clothing, but when I was going through some of the pictures that I took last year, I came across this one and I thought I would include it here, which last year I did buy a Kindle for the second time and it was life-changing. I would say that it was definitely a holy grail purchase because it has really got me into reading. I was never really a big reader before just because I'm dyslexic and I never really found reading particularly relaxing. Of course, I read for school and I will continue reading for school, but I never really read for pleasure until I got my Kindle because it has completely changed my life. I find it so much easier to read and anytime I am you know, going to an appointment or I'm running errands and I have a little bit of time in between, instead of sitting there scrolling on my phone, I will pull out my Kindle and I will read a couple of pages. And I have really been enjoying fantasy books. So if you need any fantasy recommendations, let me know. I would be happy to share those. But buying a Kindle was definitely one of the best decisions that I made in the last year. I would definitely consider myself a self-proclaimed luxury t-shirt connoisseur because I don't think there is a single single luxury brand out there, or at least not a brand that I talk and care about that I haven't bought a black t-shirt from or a dark colored t-shirt from, I should say. But I definitely took things to the next level last year when I bought a t-shirt from Laura Piana in their gift of King's Fiber, which is one of their most precious and most expensive materials that they use to craft t-shirts. And I did an entire video dedicated to some of my favorite designer t-shirts. I compared my favorite designer t-shirts that are more affordable to the Laura Piano gift of King's t-shirt, which I think is close to $3,000 or something along those lines. I can't remember the exact price, which is definitely a beautiful piece. It has an incredible drape and feel to it. It feels on unbelievably luxurious, but is it worth the price tag? Not in my opinion. So for me, it is a piece that I could certainly live without, but if you'd like to find out more about this fiber and why it is so loved by the true Laura Piano connoisseurs, I not only have a video sharing my thoughts on this particular t-shirt, but I also have a video discussing everything that you need to know about Laura Piano, including a little overview of their most expensive materials because believe it or not, this is not actually the most expensive t-shirt that Laura Piana offers. This next piece is definitely one of the most beautiful pieces of knits that I have ever seen and I have ever tried, which is from Bottega. And I feel like I don't give Bottega enough credit because I really do enjoy a lot of their pieces. This shirt is also from Bottega that I'm wearing today, which I love the cut and the fit but this color makes me look so gray. I'm hoping that I'm not gonna look too gray today, but I feel like anytime I wear this, I look kind of dull. I don't know why that is, but this color really doesn't suit me, but the cut and the fabric, I really do enjoy, but it, you know, it's just my fault. I shouldn't have bought this shirt in this color, but overall, I really do like Bottegas, especially their ready to wears. I'm a big fan of, but this was definitely a highlight of the past year, which is a cashmere cardigan that features these beautiful oversized, really heavy metal knot buttons, which definitely make this piece a showstopper. This is really a phenomenal piece, even though I don't think that their cashmere is the softest cashmere out there. It is a little bit scratchy and that hasn't changed, but the design itself is just beautiful. So for me, it is definitely a piece that I was really happy to have. I, I don't think it was life-changing. I don't think that I couldn't live without it, but it is definitely a beautiful piece of knit that I was really happy to have the chance to play around with last year. And then moving on to a piece that I don't actually have in my collection. It was a piece that I was able to test, review, and try for a month from Chanel, which is the Chanel 22 bag, but it's not a piece that I ended up with, and I really don't regret not buying it. Anytime I see this bag on someone, I still like the look of it, even though it 
definitely was on love at first sight because at first it kind of reminded me of a trash bag, which in black it still does sometimes just because of the finish of the leather and I don't like the fact that it spells as Chanel. And to be really honest with you, this bag, the reason I didn't buy it is because this bag was over 6,000 euros and it just doesn't look or feel like an over 6,000 thousand euro back to me even though I still like the idea and the look of this bag and it is definitely something that I feel like I could have a use for in my collection I just simply could not justify the price especially because I already have the poly bag from the row which I feel like does something very similar to me in a lot more elevated fashion so because I have the poly bag I didn't feel that I have a gap in my collection that this particular bag could fill but if you are a Chanel lover if you love Chanel bags but you're looking for something that is definitely a lot more user friendly more relaxed more laid back and casual I can see why you would be a fan of this bag but I am not a big Chanel fan to begin with so I mean I did return this bag but I mean, if this bag was thrown at me, I would definitely keep it. I would definitely use it. But it is definitely a bag that I can not only, I not only could have lived without, but I have been living without just fine. So I don't know, I did return it. So it's technically a return, but it is still a bag that I like the look of. It's just not something that I would personally feel comfortable spending over six thousand dollars on i just had to include this here even though this is not a purchase that i personally made this is something that was picked up for pi by pi's other dad aka my ex last year when he was in paris i asked him to pick up a color from goyard for pi because he did have a color from hermes which i was really disappointed in i have to be honest that every single piece that i ever bought for pi from hermes was kind of just a letdown, but this particular color from Goyard, I have been really impressed by. The quality is outstanding. It looks so adorable on him. So I feel like if I'm going to buy anything designer for him, it is definitely going to be a piece of Goyard. And I do think that I want to buy him maybe a yellow color from Goyard in the exact same style and size because I have been really impressed by the quality. I mean, it doesn't have a single scratch on it. The monogram, the Goyard print hasn't faded a bit and Pi is not one of those, you know, little precious dogs that doesn't really do much or that doesn't do anything. He goes running in the forest, he goes swimming, he he's just a little beast. So he really has not been, or we have really not been careful with his color and it still looks incredible so i would really trust the quality and i have been really impressed by it so for me the goyard color was definitely one of the best purchases of the last year and i would say that it is kind of a holy grail because i just really love the look of it on him in my last video which was all about pieces that i will no longer be buying in 2024 i talked about th the fact that i will not be buying any more birkin kelly or constance bags unless they are in a really unique finish so here we have a constance which was the first bag that i bought last year this is a bag that i bought last january which is in the butler which is a really special heritage leather from Hermes in the color sable which is kind of comparable to gold it is just a little bit richer and a little bit more cool toned than gold in fact it is kind of similar to the color of this shirt which is why i never felt that this particular color really suits me to me it is just yeah it just doesn't really work for me and the fact that i rarely if ever reach for bags in color meant that i never once reached for this bag i think i pulled this out a couple of times and every single time i decided to wear something else instead so for me i think the constance is just not a bag that i really reach for anymore because of the large h hardware and this particular design because of the color and the fact that the leather was so incredibly delicate is not something that got too much use in fact barely any so for me this is definitely one of those bags that if I could return for a refund, I really would. To be really honest, I completely forgot that I completed the Hermes cutlery set that I had been collecting for a couple of years last year. I only realized it when I was going through some of my unboxings from the last year because when my ex and I split, he kept all of our 
Grand Etalage Cutlery, which I had been buying for a couple of years. And clearly it's not something that I can't live without because I still don't have them. In fact, I completely forgot about them, but it was a beautiful set of cutlery that I really enjoyed having. If you are really into your Hermes tableware, this would be a really nice way to put the cherry on top. The quality is outstanding. They are really heavy, really weighty, and they do make any meal that you have at home feel like the most exclusive culinary experience. So if you are really into your RMS tableware and your RMS homeware, this is definitely a beautiful collection to add to your arsenal, but I have been living without it for the past year. Another piece that I bought last year, which was really adorable, but really not something that I think I would ever repurchase is my birdie charm from Hermes, which as I mentioned in my last video, I am not a back charm person anymore, even though I built quite the back charm collection over the years. It's just not the kind of thing that I really reach for or the kind of thing that I would really be interested in spending my money on. So the birdie back charm is definitely one of the cutest charms that I have ever seen, but it is just not my personal aesthetic at this point. So it is not something that I would repurchase. Would I return it? I mean, I could, yeah, I mean, I don't think I would buy it at this point, but it is still something that was really cute to put on my Birkin. And then we have a pair of Chanel bowling shoes here, which I bought in Copenhagen. So I think this might've been a 2022 purchase because I went to Copenhagen at the end of 2022. But anyway, since it's already here, I did buy the bowling shoes in black with a white sole. And I would say that I am happy to have these shoes because I will rarely wear all black shoes but I wish I had bought these shoes in white. I mean, I did own these shoes in white, in canvas and in leather. And I definitely would have worn this a lot more often if it was all white, not a mix of black and white, but they are really, really comfortable. I find them really flattering, but I personally would not buy Chanel shoes ever again, just because they are so insanely expensive at this point. And I would much rather spend that money on a pair of Celine sneakers. And then last but not least, a piece that I actually returned, which was a puffy jacket from Hermes. So I'm going to say that it was a return and it wasn't because of the design. I really actually quite liked the design, but it was more the fit. It was a really tapered, really fitted shape and it was from the women's line. So it simply did not suit me. My friends, this brings us to the end of today's video on some of the best and worst luxury purchases of 2023. Thank you so much for coming along on this walk down memory lane with me. And please don't forget to let me know in the comment section, what was your best and worst purchase of the past year. I cannot wait to hear from you. And while you're down there, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't done so yet. I really appreciate you being here and watching and I will see you back here with a new video really, really soon.